Hey, what's up guys? Jesse Rush with Fling Got Bows here. And I uh, just wanted to go over something here. Uh, I'm going to show you guys the layout on the mulberry bow that I'm making for Allergic Hobbit. So let's get into it here. We've got, we'll start at the, here's, here's the whole bow. And I'll show you what I did on the tips here. I've put wood glue and wax on them to stop them from checking anymore. They did check a little bit. So about a quarter inch past the checking, I drew a line across. That's where I'm going to cut off that part of the limb. I had to do it on both sides because they're checking on both sides. Uh, it checked a little past my line here, but this is on the side. It's going to be not there anymore. Really what I'm concerned with is right above the tip of the bow, which is going to be right here. Uh, that is going to be the tip. <clears throat> All right, so let's start at the handle as far as my layout goes. Let's flip it around. <clears throat> I found the center line going this way, and I also found the center of the entire bow going this lengthwise. Uh, I basically follow the grain and measure at the same time and kind of get my center line out on the center of the bow all the way down. With this center line going this way, I measure out two inches this way, two inches this way, which creates four inch handle area. And then I do three inches each way, which is a six inch handle area. Uh, the reason I do both is just to help me as a graph. Um, the handle is going to be about six inches. I like that because you got a four inch area for the hand and then a two inch area for an arrow shelf roughly. Usually I come up a half inch off the bottom and it leaves me an inch and a half area on the top for an arrow shelf. I don't know which limb is going to be top and bottom right now, so it is what it is. Um, this is just a rough out. <clears throat> okay, so what we've got here is we've got fades. So we go from the handle, which is an inch and a quarter, fading down to a full two inches <clears throat> here at the four inch mark, and then fading to full limb width here, okay, at the six inch mark. Now from there, I stay the full width of the, of the, of the bow stave. That'll be the full width of the limb. Obviously, it'll get smaller as I remove wood from the side. It'll come up, and it'll become smaller. Um, that's okay. But I'm going to remain full width here. And then I'm going to start my fades after six inches from the six inch mark on the handle. I'm going to go six more inches up and that will be where I begin to fade to the tips. Now I, will f I fade gently. That's another fade right there at the six inch mark. So I fade gently from there to my static area. The last four inches of the limb is going to be static. It's not going to bend. Uh, I have found that this um, reduces hand shock and gives the bow a little bit more speed, and I really like that. So who doesn't, right? So uh, a little bit of reason why I went around these knots is because when you when you approach a knot in the in the back of a bow, you're faced with an issue. You can do one of two things: you can go around it, cut through it or go on the other side of it. Um, cutting through it, um, it usually falls out and then you basically went on the inside of it anyway. Going around the outside of it allows the knot to stay put, doesn't pose a problem, um, and it's really the only option that I ever do. Um, so I've got a knot here that I have to go around. It's a little funny one. It's right on the edge. I may end up once I remove wood and bring it up a little bit, I may end up just going straight across the top of it. That one's an iffy. This one will still be in it for sure. Um, and this guy will definitely be in it. And I know it looks kind of silly when you get to looking at it. But it actually adds a lot of character and looks really cool. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, you know, the same thing on this side. This side doesn't have as many crazy knots, but you got the full width for six inches then the fade and then the last four inches will be static limb you know that's basically what static limbs are is they're skinny this way um, looking at it from the top view they'll be skinnier than the rest of the bow but looking at it from this way this limb will be real skinny to here and then that last four inches actually gets thicker and that makes this last four inches on each end of the bow not bend and I know it's only four inches, it doesn't seem like much, but the reason I did it shorter 
is because number one, a lot of my limbs I do the four inch static limb on. Um, I know like Borier bows and a lot of guys they do them like really long, almost Mulgabet style or um, you know home guard style. But but I don't do it that way. I just do a four inch. Um, and by doing that, it allows me <clears throat> to have shorter bows um, and still get a pretty good um, uh, shooting weapon out of the deal. Uh, this bow, from tip to tip, once I cut off these uh, checking ends, will be 55 and three quarters of an inch long, tip to tip. That is a very short bow. However, mulberry... As you can see, I have a lot of heartwood in this one, and I've brought it down eight growth rings through the sapwood, so it's very close to the heartwood. Um, and mulberry is an incredible bow wood. It's a cousin to Osage Orange, um, so it really bends good, and heat bends good. Um, it's just a really good bow. Um, I've asked a few questions to some experts, and I think I'm going to go ahead and just heat bend this. Um, this little bend on the end. I'm not worried about this end too much. This end isn't that bad. But see the other end down there, how it kicks off to the left? Once I get the bow roughed out pretty good to where it's like a lot of wood has been taken off of it compared to where it is now, I'm going to put cooking oil all over it where I want it to bend, which is right about here. There's almost a kink, about a 20 degree angle kink. And I'm going to put cooking oil all over that. And I'm going to try to bend that out of there just by wedging it in between two trees and just pulling the bow and holding it and holding it and holding it and holding it and, holding it and trying to get that out of there. I may come up with some sort of system or a, or a, a vice type tie it with ropes and leave it type system to, till it cools. Um, this stave has some reflex and some deflex. This limb over here is reflexed. This limb over here is slightly deflexed. Typically, that really doesn't do a whole lot. Um, I'll show you a mulberry bow, that mulberry bow that I made last week for a friend. This is a left-handed bow, which has, I did not take the bend out of it, the sideways bend. You can see that ridiculous curve. Um, but it shoots great, um, and it's a great little bow. Um, 45 pounds at 26 inches, 51 pounds at 28 inches. This bow, two things about this I wanted to tell you. This one is only about three inches longer than this this other stave. It's the same length, but I got to cut the checking off. It's actually a little shorter, but I've got to cut the checking off. So, um, whoops, with the checking part cut off of this other bow this this new bow that I'm making will be about three inches shorter um, and all I got to do is get a full 26 inch draw out of this one this one can be drawn to 28 inches 51 pounds and uh, it's 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 definitely um, much not much longer um, very naughty bow this one was the difference between these two bows will be this one, all I did was pull the bark off and uh, go ahead and run with it. This is a 100% sapwood bow with another piece of mulberry glued on for a handle riser. I will be doing the same thing with the handle on this bow. Um, but I may use yew wood. I have some chunks of yew, Pacific, Northwest Pacific yew wood laying around. And I may use yew wood for the handle just because it's kind of cool like that. Um, but uh, yeah, so, um, and here's the knots. You can see kind of like the finished product of how you leave the knot in the, in the bow. Mulberry is very knotty looking stuff. <laughs> it just is, the trees around me anyway. Here's the static four inch limb that I was telling you about. Very thin, boom, four inches of thickness, but thinner this way. That uh, makes this bow shoot great. And lastly, this mulberry bow was reflexed on both ends and after shooting it a few times it is pretty much straight all the way across maybe even a little tiny bit of deflex coming right off the handle I like a little bit of deflex I think it makes your bow shoot incredibly good um, I'll string this mulberry bow up for you here just to show you um, how good it you know I'm sure you got some doubts by looking at it there 
all crooked and weird looking, but um, it actually, once strung, is an incredible bow. Uh, set it up there. And uh, it came out really good. That's a 51 pound at 28 inches. Uh, I, I do everything. I, my draw is 26, so I mark everything at the 26. So it's 45 pounds at 26 inches. 50, 56 and a half inches knock to knock, but tip to tip, it's 58 and a quarter, I believe. But knock to knock, it's 56 and a half inches. I, I, I do knock to knock measurements so that it's easier to buy new strings for them. So, there's my other mulberry bow, and hopefully this one started off a lot straighter than, like, the one that I have strung right now here was very crooked. Um, I, that's after straightening it. That's what I could get it to. Uh, it, it shoots fine. Um, like, it's not crooked at all. When you're shooting it, it's great. But it is definitely crooked. I mean, it definitely sits very awkward and weird. Um, but it's tillered properly, and this it's a left-handed bow, so I haven't shot it much, but I have shot it, and the guy that I built it for has shot it a bunch of times. He just hasn't, I wanted it to sit at my house a little longer before I gave it to him, just to uh, work out any kinks and uh, test shoot it a little more. But there you have that, and uh, hopefully this bow is going to come out much better than that one, and that bow came out great. Um, I'm going to try to heat bend that out of there. I want to get this bow nice and straight and performing very well. Um, I'm sending this to Allergic Hobbit. Uh, he's a guy that I've learned a lot off of YouTube from. And uh, Anyway, there you go. Uh, there it is. I'll keep you guys updated as I move through the building process. Um, oh, let me show you what a U wood handle looks like on a white piece of wood. This is a vine maple bow that I made. And uh, this is uh, this is my hunting bow. It has been used quite a bit. It's about eight months old, and I have probably shot it twenty thousand times. Uh, there's the back. This little paint job. Um, vine maple. You can't really see the grain like you can in uh, mulberry. But this is a Pacific U wood handle on vine maple and I just really like that I thought that was really cool um, I kind of make the same style handle with all my bows it's basically a uh, uh, you know I just make it to where it feels comfortable when you're holding it in your hand I know a lot of people say oh it looks like a penis well if that's what you want to look at it as then you go right ahead but I look at it as a very form fitted comfortable handle on uh, my polyurethane my bows, um, I don't go ridiculous crazy and make them look like glass, but I do coat them in like two coats of polyurethane. That's about the extent of the shine on the limbs right there. Um, I don't go, I try not to go crazy with it on purpose. I do put about five coats on the handle, plus the handle gets kind of buffed out just from me holding it all the time. Um, this is a 55 pound at 26 inches, it's a little bigger of a bow, but the same thing. Static limbs on the ends. Um, really nice vine and maple bow. Anyway, I'm Jesse Rush with Fling Got Bows, and uh, this one took a lot of string follow, by the way. <laughs> vine maple, uh, this, this piece was bent this way, and the bark was, I got a split in half log from Medicine Bow Woods, and uh, it had some deflex in it, and I didn't really feel like messing with it. I just made a nice bow out of it, and I'll tell you what, it's my favorite bow. Um, it's, that's unstrung. Uh, but yeah, it's my favorite bow. Um, I'm, anyway, I'm Jesse Rush with Flingot Bows, and uh, take it easy. Peace.